There are plenty of villains out there in the world of Marvel Comics, but not a lot that can be considered villains of the Avengers as a whole. When you're dealing with a team of some of the strongest people in the universe, then you're not a threat if you're just a small-time crook. No, you need to be big, bad, and powerful. Kang the Conqueror is one such villain, and is one of the biggest and most intimidating foes that the Avengers have ever faced. He's also one of the dumbest characters in all of Marvel, and I hate him with a burning passion. So, yeah, I get the feeling that this video is going to be a lot more negative, and I'm going to get a lot more worked up than my usual videos. Yay! But before jumping into all of that, I want to take a minute to give a big thank you to our sponsor for today's video, Keeps. One of my favorite physical traits is my thick hair, but since two out of three guys experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35, I know that it might not last forever, especially now that I'm getting really close to 30. That's where Keeps comes in. They're a subscription service that makes it easy and affordable to treat male pattern baldness. It's directly handled through a real licensed doctor over the internet to get you the right treatment for you, which is shipped directly to your door every three months, which means no boring doctor visits. Plus, if you ever need to ask your doctor any questions or raise any concerns in the meantime, then you can message them 24-7, and you can also track your progress by using their handy-dandy tracking tool. On top of that, Keeps is extremely affordable by using generic versions of FDA-approved medications for hair loss, but with my special code, it'll be even cheaper. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, then go to keeps.com slash comicdrake, or click the link in the description down below to receive 50% off your first order. That's k-e-e-p-s dot com slash comicdrake. Thank you Keeps for helping me keep the lights on and also pay my editor. But now, back to the video. So King the Conqueror is a classic villain, and I mean classic. Created by the iconic duo of Stan Lee and Jack Kirby, Kang made his first appearance as the Egyptian pharaoh Rama Tut all the way back in Fantastic Four number 19 in 1963, and then as his modern self in Avengers number 8 a year later. His whole thing is being a big bad dude from the future who's trying to go backwards and forwards in time to take control of, well, everything. He has all sorts of futuristic technology at his disposal and can fling his opponents all over the time stream. We've seen these kinds of bad guys time and time again across all sorts of media, but at the time of his creation, the concept was still pretty novel and a great fit for the fledgling Avengers team. On a base level, I really like Kang and characters like him. Time travel is a concept that has fascinated me for my entire life. I mean, hell, my favorite superhero of all time is Booster Gold, a guy from the future who went back to the past in order to use his knowledge of future events to save the day and be a hero, and also a huge sellout. But when written badly, time travel is one of the most batshit insane things that you could ever introduce to a story, and it only serves to make things completely incomprehensible. Kang, as he's been written over the years, is everything that I hate about time travel stories. The character makes no goddamn sense to the average reader, and requires way too much in-depth nerdy knowledge to keep up with. But since I have some of that knowledge, uh, let's start off with his parentage. Kang's real name is Nathaniel Richards, and he's related to Reed Richards of the Fantastic Four. Reed's dad is a time traveler, and he's constantly on the move and making moves on the ladies throughout time. One of his many, many children is from the far future, grows up, and eventually his descendant Nathaniel is born, who grows up to be Kang. But also, we don't know if that's actually true. All of this is just his alleged backstory. I mean, hell, there's also a good chance that he's actually the descendant of Doctor Doom. He could even be both. Because comics. But then things get even crazier when you realize that Kang isn't just one guy. No, no, no. There is a metric fuck ton of them. See, when you're dealing with time travel, all that zipping and zapping that you're doing across the time stream results in you making several duplicates of yourself. And in the case of Kang, so many of them end up becoming different people entirely. Kang is literally made out of one-off villains of the week. So yeah, you've got your Kang, but then there's Amortis, Scarlet Centurion, Rama Tut, Victor Timely, Iron Lad, Kid Amortis, and an entire council of Kangs. Every single one of these dudes has their own intricate history and backstory that intertwines with each other, directly affecting and rewriting the history of the others. And can you see why this shit gets aggravating? So yeah, Rama Tut. One of the first things that Nathaniel did was go back to ancient Egypt and rule over it with his future technology as a pharaoh. His time machine was the Sphinx. Like, 
the actual Sphinx. Then there's a version of Tut that met Doctor Doom, who also thought that he might actually be Doom. Anyway, he was inspired to don an armored look, take up the name Scarlet Centurion, and terrorize the Avengers. But guess what? Nathaniel got his butt handed to him and decided to take on another persona. This time it was finally Kang. And as Kang, Nathaniel conquered Earth in the future and expanded his rule to form a galactic empire. But ever the greedy bastard, it wasn't enough for him. No, Kang wanted everything, so he went back to the past to try and take over Earth all the way back then. But of course, he's stopped time and time again by the Avengers and other heroes. But okay, if he can't have all of Earth, then maybe he should start small. And so, by taking up the name Victor Timely, Kang founded the town of Timely, Wisconsin, and he acted as its mayor. But as he aged, he pretended to be his kids, Victor Timely Jr. and then Victor Timely III. Oh, don't forget about Immortus. You can't forget about Immortus! He's an older Kang from the farther future, but is also considered to be the quote-unquote good Kang, since he works with these powerful lizard people called the Timekeepers to watch over a seven millennia period of time to try and prevent confusing time travel stuff from happening. But guess what, Immortus? You suck at your job, because this is still complicated as fuck. Then there's Iron Lad. He's a younger version of Kang who was visited by one of his seven bajillion older selves to try and get the interdimensional, interchronal world domination ball rolling earlier. Well, tough break. Little Kang doesn't want to grow up to be a bad guy. So he goes back in time, forms a team called the Young Avengers, dates Ant-Man's daughter, and then kills his older self. But it doesn't really mean shit, because time travel. And Kang can and does pop back up by taking advantage of alternate timelines, harnessing paradoxal energy, and other gobbledygook nonsense. But wait just a gosh darn minute, there's another version of Iron Lad that does become a bad guy. He takes up the name Kid Immortus and teams up with Doctor Doom to help fight the Fantastic Four. But it looks like this incarnation was forgotten about by Marvel Comics entirely. But who knows, it's Marvel! Maybe Kid Immortus will come back with 10 other versions of himself next year! Kang and all his alter egos thrive off of paradoxes, and for some fans, the fact that he's confusing and makes no goddamn sense whatsoever is part of the charm and appeal of the character. Now, I'm on the other end of the spectrum. Don't get me wrong, I am a big lore guy. I love combing through decades of comic book nonsense to try and piece together a coherent timeline of events. Why else would I do deep dive videos that catalog every job that Spider-Man has ever had, or uncovering the most powerful entity in the DC multiverse? This is my literal full-time job, and I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. But no matter how many comics I read or how hard I try to piece it together, Kang has not and never will make sense to me. I also feel like this kind of writing is extremely off-putting to new readers. Kang is exactly the kind of over-the-top, nonsensical character that non-comic readers think the entire industry is like. If this kind of stuff is inaccessible to someone like me, who goes through decades of comic history to piece together every bit of training that Batman has gone through, then I can only imagine how put off a casual reader must be. I have said multiple times on the channel that there is no such thing as bad characters, only bad writers. And hey, I'm not trying to insult everyone who has ever written a Kang story, because then I would be insulting a whole slew of the greatest and most prolific comic writers of all time. But even though I'm not a writer, I don't think that it should be this difficult to write a good and easy to understand story about the time travel guy. Now don't get me wrong, complicated characters can and frequently are really entertaining. But with Kang, it feels like half of these writers are just trying to go out of their way to make him even more ridiculous just to troll readers like me. And yup, it's definitely working. Kang the Conqueror doesn't bring anything to the table that other villains can't- <coughs> Oh! Too big of a swig! Kang the Conqueror doesn't bring anything to the table that other villains can't accomplish for Marvel. You want a time travel guy? Doctor Doom is right there. Galactic Conqueror? There's Annihilus. Or how about this? Anything that you want to do with Kang could just be accomplished by making an entirely new character with a fresh canvas so you can do whatever you want with. But, you know... I wish that the million and a half identities and time duplicates were the most frustrating part of Kang's history. But I know, it's, it's not. You see, Kang's a little rapey. One of the biggest stories that Kang was involved in was the Celestial Madonna Saga. It was prophesied that the most powerful being in existence was going to be sired soon, and Kang wanted to be its father so that he could use the child to take over the universe. Kang was able to narrow down the identity of the woman who would give birth to the Messiah to Scarlet Witch, Mantis, and Agatha Harkness. So he kidnapped all three of them, and presumably would try to impregnate all of them to hedge his bets. Since the kidnapped women were either Avengers or friends with them, naturally the team stepped up to save the day, even teaming up with Rama Tut, 
who, remember, is a different version of Kang to stop him. Mid-combat, it was discovered that Mantis was the prophesied mother, and King decided that if he can't sexually assault her, give her a forced pregnancy, and use the child to his own ends, then nobody can be the father, and he tried to kill Mantis. But her boyfriend jumped in the way and took the killing blow. But if that wasn't enough, Kang is also responsible for one of the most infamous characters in all of Marvel history, his son, Marcus. And guess what? The apple doesn't fall too far from the extremely rapey tree. Now, this is going to need its own video in the future, but I'll do my best to try and summarize it here. Alright, so Amortis, that older future Kang, decided that he wanted a mate, so he went back in time and found a woman who was destined to not survive a shipwreck. Amortis saved her, and thanks to a combination of gratitude and manipulation of his vague machines, she fell in love with him and gave birth to their son, Marcus. Well, Marcus was born in a dimension called Limbo, and wasn't able to leave it since he wouldn't survive outside of it. He wandered Limbo cold and alone, occasionally using the vague machines to look in on Earth, and it's here that he discovered Carol Danvers, aka Miss Marvel. Deeming Carol to be the strongest possible vessel, Marcus kidnapped her, and like his father before him, used the vague machines to make Carol fall in love with him. Then, Marcus impregnated her with… himself, wiped her memories, and then sent her back to Earth. See, in order to exist on Earth, Marcus needed to be born there, and by inseminating himself into Carol, this is how he could literally be reborn. Carol's weird pregnancy came to full term in only a couple of weeks, and then she gave birth to Marcus, who grew into full manhood in a single day. But then it turned out that his plan to exist on Earth didn't work, so Marcus hypnotized Carol, brought her back to Limbo, and basically raped her body and mind until he hyper-aged, thus prompting Carol to use his vague machines to bring her all the way back to Earth. And yeah. It's pretty dark, and the Avengers were just kind of okay with it. We got a second Marcus years later, but this one is the son of Kang and not Amortis, because of course the writers needed to make things even more complicated. But thankfully, this one didn't violate Carol. At this point, there is no use in trying to make Kang an easier character. He's already wrapped up in crazy convoluted lore, and is attached to some really weird storylines. Plus, any attempt to try and streamline him only serves to make him more complicated. I know that there is no changing Kang, and now he's one of those characters that as soon as he pops in a book, I just stop reading it. For me, his mere presence is enough to ruin a story. So yeah, like I said, this is a lot more negative than most of my videos, but now that Kang is getting shoved in our faces, I just wanted to have my say. But anyway, if you like this video, then why not consider subscribing, or even watching another one? And if you want to know about more time travel gobbledygook nonsense, then maybe check out the video that I did on the TVA. They're like Marvel's time cops. I went crazy in depth on the lore, and I'm really happy with how the video turned out. So yeah, I hope you learned at least a little something new, and hopefully, I'll see you next time.